five minutes with Eric. So this story comes out of real life and it, there's a couple lessons we can learn from it. So first is difference between if you pass away with a will, we call that testate succession, meaning that the will will say literally what we want. So if we want to give money to a cousin or to a friend or to a university, we would need to put that in a will. Now, if we pass away without a will, that's called intestate succession. So that's when somebody dies and unfortunately, the cousin, the friend, and the university are all out of luck because we're just gonna go to the statute and the statute is just gonna do a family tree. So if they're married to the spouse, if they have kids, to the kids. If they're not married and they don't have kids, to the parents. If their parents are already passed, to the brothers and sisters. If the brothers and sisters are passed, to their kids. If they're passed, up to the grandparents. And every state has a slightly different rule and so on and so forth, right? And then after a certain level of generations, it literally goes to the state. So if you have no family and everybody's passed away, then, and you die and you don't have a will, then literally everything will just ultimately go, in this case, to the state of Florida. So that is intestate. Now, never a good idea. Uh, if you have anything that you feel like is worth passing on to somebody else, get a will. Now, what's better than a will? A trust. Now, why is that? So we can create the trust while we're alive but a trust becomes something that can live for much longer. It can live for maybe a couple generations. And so what the trust will do is it allows us to A, give specific instructions, like I wanna give something to the cousin and to the friend and to the university, but B, if we do it right, we avoid probate. So what's probate? So probate is the court system for transferring property. Here's an easy example. Grandma passes away, she's not married, she does, um, all of her kids are grown up and moved out, um, and she owns a house in her own name, okay? Now, if she has a will and the will says, I wanna leave all my assets, including my house, to my kids, then what the kids will need to do is go down to the courthouse with that will and say, all right, judge, um, grandma passed and we need to transfer the house out of her name, right? Because her name's on the, on the records, the public records. The only way we're getting that house out of her name is for the judge to sign off on it. That is probate. And in the best of times, that was a couple months. In the worst of times, that's a couple years. It opens up a creditor period. You find out that grandma had credit card debt that nobody knew, and now they have a claim against the house. Um, a lot of interesting things can come up in the probate process. Now, let's just say grandma passes away without a will. Well, same thing. We're still going to have to go down to the probate court, and we're still going to have to do a probate process. In this case, instead of using the will to say who gets what, we're going to go to the law of intestacy, right? Which we already talked about, which is a statute that says what happens. So option one, we have a will, still kind of is going to be a drag. It's going to take a couple years to sort it all out in worst case scenario. Option two is we don't have a will, so it's still going to take a couple years to sort it out, and we don't really get much say in what happens. Or option three is while grandma was still alive, she went and created a trust. Maybe she named herself as the present trustee, but then she had a successor trustee. Maybe it's one of her kids if something happened to her, whether that's disabled or ultimately when she passes away. Then she can name beneficiaries so we can get the university, the cousin, the friend. Um, you know, we can be unique there. And then while she's still alive, we retitle the home. So we take the home out of her name and we put it into the name of her trust, meaning that when you look up the property records, it's gonna say the trust is the owner of the property. Well, what happens when she passes away? The successor trustee, so maybe the kids call the lawyer, the lawyer says, we have bad news, grandma passed, and the lawyer says, okay, let me pull the, the, the trust out of the, out of the filing cabinet, and here it is, okay, it says the successor trustee is cousin Michael, let's give cousin Michael a call, and we're like, all right, cousin Michael, grandma passed, we need your help uh, transferring the property. Now, here's the beautiful thing. Cousin Michael can execute a trustee deed on the same day meaning we don't have to go to court, we don't have to pay a filing fee, we don't have to wait all those months or even years. So that's the ideal situation. The ideal situation is grandma goes and gets a trust before she passes away, and then the family doesn't have to go get a lawyer, they don't have to do anything. It's just easy peasy, everyone's taken care of. Now, why am I thinking about this? So one of my clients comes to me about a month ago, and he says, Eric, I got this will from 1981. I've had additional children, I've had grandchildren, I bought assets in multiple countries, in three European countries, two states in the United States, I have assets everywhere. I said, okay, do you have a trust? No trust. I go, okay, so everything you own is just in your personal name and it's all gonna go through this will, right? He goes, right. I'm like, okay, we need to fix that. Let's do a trust, let's do this, that, and the other. And he says, I'll do it after I get back from my European vacation. 
And unfortunately, he got COVID, he got pneumonia, he ended up in the ICU in a European capital, and he passed away uh, day before yesterday. And um, unfortunately, we are now sorting out how to probate that 1981 will, which who knows if it even reflects his, his wishes or intent anymore now where he is in his life. So, or no pun intended, but rest in peace. Um, we're gonna do whatever we can to help his widow and his family and make it as painless as possible. And I just hate to say this, but if he had just allowed me to finish the trust and executed it to witnesses and a notary before he went on his vacation, the family would probably be saving somewhere between five and $10,000 in fees and costs after the fact. So anyways, guys, um, a lot of morals there. Don't go on vacation. If you're thinking about doing your estate plan, don't put it off till after the vacation. Please just get it done. Give me a call if you guys have any questions.